Well, then, what to say about the Bristol Night Race? I mean, it's one of those ones that's really strange because it has the perfect recipe to be a really chaotic event, but in the end, it wasn't so much a chaotic event, and there were big dramas, but we didn't have overtime, and I think we ended with, what were they saying, about 41 minutes green, which, that's almost madness. And let's talk about the story of the race. I mean, Kyle Larson wins it, but he was up at the front pretty much the entire time. I mean, he qualified on the front row. He had top three all Hendrick with Bowman taking pole, and Bowman led for most of the early stage. Stage one, uh, Larson ends up getting through in the late phase and leads Bowman home. Ten points and nine points, respectively. But then... It was starting to look good for Martin Truex Jr. He got fourth in stage one. Stage two, he, he gets second. Tyler Reddick boosts some of the uh, Toyotas by staying out late. He was the only one, well, only one of that lead pack to stay out late in the late stage caution, which ended up causing some disadvantages to, I think, I think his Suarez got disadvantage because he was held a lap down as a result. But it helped Truex out because he got second, and then Reddick got fourth. Christopher Bell got fifth, and that meant that uh, he he and Bowman got seventh for stage two, were locked in to the second round of the playoffs. And in the third stage, he pretty much kept clearing off. Chase Elliott came good in the end, picks up a brilliant second place finish. Bubba Wallace gets third, and gets 40 points, which... I mean, it's going to be good for the non-playoff drivers. But I reckon it's still probably a what could have been. I mean, Wallace has been running good this season. And he's been running better and better. The top five were round out by Bell and Hamlin. Sorry, not in that order though. Hamlin got fourth and Bell got fifth. But then Hamlin did what he needed to do. Because he was battling for that cut line. He was so close to being knocked out. So he just had to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. In the end, because of the long green flag runnings that we had, I mean, we only had a not even a handful of cautions, did we? It's lateral cautions, that is. We had Logano. Um, I think we had early on. Who was it we had early on? Was John Hunter? Yeah, so we didn't really have much to make it more dramatic. It was all about who was the best driver on the day. I want to say somebody who really impressed me in this stage of the playoffs was Bowman the Showman. He did really well to get through to the round of 12. And, I mean, I think he ended up being... I think he ended up being second or third in that round because of Larson winning. Like... It's been a great performance. But let's talk playoff implications because my round of 16 guesses, I got one right. And that was Harrison Burton, who had a nightmare race because he ended up running, what, 50, 60, 70 laps down in the end because the power steering went. But I'd also predicted Bowman, of all people, was going to get knocked out because he was in really poor form. And that's when we started to have the rumours of, was he going to be coming back to Hendrick? But it seemed to have lit something from under him because he's now shot up as probably the most consistent of the Hendrick drivers. Sindrick and Suarez were doing quite well. Sindrick did really well at the Glen. And Suarez managed to get through at the last gasp to knock out two JGR cars. Which means Gibbs, who was my prediction, somebody I predicted preseason to win a race and make the round of 12, ended up not. I mean, he did run well at some points, but he just didn't have that beneath him to be able to make a great start in the playoffs. And that just meant that he wasn't going to run good at the end. But two of my... Uh, Round of eight predictions are also knocked out Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex. And some of that's been rotten luck for both of them. Glenn was really bad for both of them. 
but yeah, it's my predictions are very much in the mud, especially because I thought that um, the 16th seed would make the round of eight. And so the thing is, I doubled down on those things by thinking that Gibbs would make the round of 12 and Truex would make the round of eight. That cope has really come back to bite me. Anyways, the playoff picture now has Larson 39 to the good, Bell 24, Redick 20, Byron 14, Blaney 11, Hamlin 7, Elliot 6, Pagano 4, and then Sindrix the first one out at minus 4, then Suarez minus 6, Bowman and Briscoe minus 7. But with Kansas Dago and the Roval coming up, three completely different tracks. Dega could produce any kind of wildcard winner, even somebody who's not in the playoffs. Kansas is most likely going to be your uh, most cookie cutter of tracks. It's going to be the least chaotic, I think, out of the three in the round of 12. And in the Roval. It's the Roval out of the new hairpin for this season. It can certainly produce more chaos. So, who is in the best place for this? Well, I would say that the top three easily are. I think it's surprising that Logano is on the bubble, considering that he won at Atlanta, but Logano really hasn't had the form this season. So, the best thing for Logano is to play to the strengths of the playoff system and win his way in. Larson has done really well by having the win at Bristol because that's just a bounce back to form. I mean, there was conversation about him being the best driver in the world right now, better than Max Verstappen. And the thing is, like Max Verstappen, they both had a massive dip in form at the moment. But I don't know who else I would really put my money on. Because I think Bowman is having the time of his life right now. And, I mean, he won his way into the playoffs at Chicago. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another win at the Roval. But I really don't know. I think we're going to have at least two big upsets in the round of 12. And technically, if my predictions served me right, I think Larson would get locked, knocked out, which would do me really badly, because he's my prediction for champion. Anyway, those are my thoughts, and may I also comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.